Our work is called Learning of Parameters in Behavior Trees for Movement Skills. This project is joint work of Konstantinos Hacheli Jarubis, Fassi Ahmad, Luigi Nardi, Volker Krüger, and myself, Matthias Meyer. What is our motivation and why is this research relevant? We observed that reinforcement learning is a powerful method, but not well adopted in industry. Why is this the case? We note that many approaches suffer from important but frequent shortcomings. Especially in the learning phase, many approaches are unsafe for the robot and the environment. Approaches are data inefficient and need long interaction times. And policies have deficiencies, such as not being interpretable, being specific, as well as not adaptive and modular. How do we address these shortcomings? Dangerous behaviors are avoided by learning and simulation. This also tackles data efficiency since it does not block the real system during that phase. The main aspect is our policy formulation consisting of behavior trees for task and behavior switching in combination with a motion generator operating in robot and effector space that is parametrized by movement skills. We optimize policy parameters with a black box optimization algorithm and utilize domain randomization to overcome the symmetry gap and to ensure robust execution. In the following section, I will introduce the key components of our approach. The reinforcement learning problem formulation, the proposed robot policy consisting of behavior trees with movement skills, how the policy optimization is done, how domain randomization is integrated, and the robot control requirements and our solution. In order to optimize policy parameters, we adopt the policy search formulation. We have a dynamical system in the form xt plus one equals xt plus the state changes based on the current state and the action taken. Our state space consists of the continuous value joint positions and joint velocities of the manipulator. The actions are the seven continuous valued commander joint velocities. We define reward functions based on the state, such as distance to a goal, avoidance of objects in the workspace, and success of the behavior tree. As introduced before, our proposed policy consists of two main components, behavior trees and a motion generator that is parametrized by movement skills depending on the task and the parameters of these movement skills. This formulation has several advantages. It allows to control the robot in end effector space. It is interpretable and modular. We can see which parts of the behavior tree are active in a certain state, and we can easily combine trees with other trees. This formulation also allows to often have a low dimensional search space, as well as easy adaption to changes in the environment. How does ticking of a behavior tree work? And how does it change the settings of the motion generator? A behavior tree is a planned representation and execution tool. It consists of control flow nodes or processors and execution nodes. A behavior tree has always an initial node with no parents defined as root and one or more nodes with no children called leaves. The execution of a behavior tree is done by periodically injecting a tick signal into the root. The signal is routed according to the control flow nodes and the return statements of the children. By convention, the signal propagation goes from left to right. This can be exploited to set priorities. Depending on the conditions and the current state, different branches are activated and the motion generator is configured accordingly. The goal is to find a policy pi with policy parameters theta, such that it maximizes the expected long-term reward when executing the policy for t time steps. We see j as a noisy function because of the applied domain randomization and uncertainties in the state transitions. Since our policy representation is not differentiable, we frame the optimization as a black box optimization and seeks the maximization of the reward function j by only using measurements of the function. Covariance matrix adaptation evolution strategy 
as a stochastic derivative free method for numerical optimization of nonlinear and non convex continuous optimization problems. It models a population of points as a multivariate normal distribution. It performs four steps at each generation k. Reproduction. Sample lambda new offsprings according to a multivariate Gaussian distribution. Truncation selection. Rank the lambda sample candidates based on their performance j theta and select the fittest new individuals. Gaussian update. To reflect the distribution of the mu best candidates, compute mk plus 1 by averaging the mu best candidates. Finally, update the covariance matrix based on the distribution of the mu best candidates. At the end of a learning procedure, we use the mean of the last distribution for increased robustness as the final best parameter configuration. Eventually, the policy must perform on the real system. The main randomization is used to pitch the reality gap between the digital twin and the physical robot. The idea of the main randomization is to introduce enough variability into the simulation such that the real physical robot may appear as just another variation of the simulation. Furthermore, uncertainties in the work environment, such as different start configurations, relocated objects, and interactions with humans can be incorporated when learning. In this work, we apply the main randomization on the start configuration of the robot, as well as on the position of objects in the environment. The interactions with the environment and human operators need to be safe. Therefore, the forces exerted by the robot need to be limited and maximum joint velocities need to be adhered. However, this leads to a decrease in accuracy, which makes tasks that happen on a millimeter scale more challenging. Following these requirements, our control solution is chosen with inspiration from Cartesian impedance control. But instead of commanding joint torques directly, we send joint velocity commands. On the robot, we configure joint impedance mode to ensure that no large forces can be applied. We evaluate our approach with a KUKA EVA 7 degree of freedom manipulator. The robot is controlled by our own implementation of the motion generator. The goal is to reach a target position on the other side of an obstacle and perform a peg insertion on that side. In order for the task to succeed, two parameters in the behavior tree and several movement skill parameters need to be learned. The first subtask includes to learn to avoid a static obstacle. Such an obstacle could be fragile and collisions could damage the object, the tools, or the manipulator itself. The structure of the behavior tree for the task is provided, but several parameters need to be learned. These include both the positions of intermediate goals, as well as the conditions of the branches in the behavior tree. It is important to note that the parameters interplay with each other in order to perform the final trajectory. We learn this task entirely in simulation. We learn 10 policies with 5,000 iterations each. We compare our approach to a feed for a neural network that has one hidden layer with 10 neurons. The development of the reward on the left side shows that BTMS policies learned high-performing behaviors in only a few hundred iterations. They learn significantly faster than neural nets. Neural nets could eventually outperform the given structure of the movement skills. However, even though they control the end effect or goal position, the motions can be much harder to predict. Furthermore, the performance is less consistent. The pack and hold task is a common assembly task that includes contact forces and is therefore much harder to learn than free space movements. We know the position of the box within the frame of the workstation with a precision error of less than 10 millimeters. We allow the robot to perform a search motion close to the surface of the box in order to find the hole. We learn both the set coordinate of the goal point that influences the pressure that is applied on the surface, as well as the search path velocity. The pack can get stuck or can jump over the hole if there is too little pressure for a given path velocity. 
We learned this policy either completely in simulation or on the real system. We learned six policies with 5,000 iterations in simulation. However, we acknowledge that an accurate enough simulation of contact with tasks might not always be available. Therefore, we also learned six policies with 200 iterations on the real robot. We evaluate the policies with the five start positions used for training, plus 10 additional start poses that were previously unknown. Without the search motion, only 20% of the insertions are successful. When sampling random parameters for the search motion, we get highly uncertain performance. The parameters learned with the real system showed the most consistent performance with a median success rate of 100% and only one outlier that still achieved 53%. The parameters learned in simulation show good performance as well, but have negative outliers. The modular nature of the behavior trees allows us to combine the policies of the two tasks into one or split a large policy into sub-policies. In this experiment, we want to explore if two policies that are learned in simulation and reality can be combined, how well the combined policies perform, and to which extent it can accomplish the task if the whole is displaced. We combine the obstacle task policies learned in simulation with the pack insertion policies learned with the real system one-to-one. -one. None of the combined policies collide with the environment. In case of a perfect positioning of the hole, an insertion rate of 100% was achieved. A misalignment of 5% led to a success rate of 91%, while a displacement of 10 millimeters still allowed an insertion rate of 83%. These results showcase the modularity and efficacy of our BTMS method. Here we can see the execution of the combined task on the real system. The lower left corner indicates which part of the behavior tree is currently running and if the behavior tree succeeds. Furthermore, we show how the system behaves when being perturbated. The reactive nature of the behavior trees with their periodic tick signal allows us to react to perturbations and continue the task. We demonstrated that BTMS policies can learn faster than black box policies such as neural nets. We also showed how multiple policies can be easily combined into a single, more complex policy. Furthermore, we demonstrated that the sub policies learned in simulation can be combined with counterparts learned with the real manipulator. For many tasks, <clears throat> these policy representations offer a low dimensional search space that even allow us to learn with a physical robot. For future work, we are planning to look into learning tasks that require dual arm coordination. Furthermore, we want to extend the approach to include other types of learnable parameters, such as integers, as well as ordinal and categorical values. We introduced a novel pipeline to learn tasks with the BTMS policy representation that uses behavior trees and parametric movement skills. It is an interpretable, robust, and modular policy for robot manipulators. Furthermore, we have shown that learning can be conducted in a safe way. To the best of our knowledge, this is the first application of reinforcement learning to the parameterization of behavior trees with manipulators. We demonstrated its efficacy with free space motions and contact-rich tasks. Feel free to check out the code hosted on GitHub.